Hey, how's it going? This is Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. Um, just a quick one, a hint. No, a tip. It, yeah, this is a tip. It's slightly bigger than a hint, um, but it's not really a full tutorial. It's certainly not a full tutorial. Uh, so yeah, just a tip. Um, so I had a little project the other day uh, that I wanted certain objects to fall into a certain position and end up with a certain color. Uh, so this I thought was gonna be really straightforward and easy. So just grab a cube, maybe shrink it down a bit, uh, put it inside of a cloner, uh, make it a grid array, um, add a few more, something like that. Maybe shrink them down so that they fit a little bit. Uh, there we go, bang. Okay, so I've made my uh, cubes and then I'll make a floor. Let's do that, and we make the cubes dynamic, rigid body, and the floor simulation collider body. Right, and that gives us our cubes falling to the floor. A little bit slippery, so let's just uh, tone down, or tone up that friction. There we go. So there we go, and they should all just sort of sit together a bit better. Yeah, it's not too bad. Right, we'll move the floor up just a touch. Right. Obviously, the project I was working on was a little bit more complex than this, but this is what I did to test it. I figured if I want the different colors, all I do is with my cloner, go to MoGraph, Effect uh, Shader. And then what happens is by default, our scale gets ramped up. So we want to turn that back down or we'll turn that off. Um, go to Shading and then maybe let's just say Color and choose a color like red. Nice and simple to see. Okay, so we've got that going on. Um, perhaps we'll put it into a box and uh, we'll enlarge our box a bit and maybe shrink that down. There we go. Okay, so that's that section there. Um, and I think I'll just pull that in so it only affects its, its own little area. Right, so that's that one. So shader, let's move that down to the bottom here. And um, perhaps make a copy, shader number one. Make sure that that's in the effectors, boom, like so. And move, oh, not that one. Move number one up and stretch that out a bit. Okay. And um, make this one maybe a blue color. There we go. So now we've ended up with our red and our blue section. Okay, so that's kind of what I was aiming for. I think uh, the reason for that is, let's see, uh, shader number one. I think it's to do with my, this, I need to make a bit wider, there we go. Wider, something like that. Make sure it fits. Uh, the top one here, make sure this is bigger, 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 bigger. Okay, if we want a sharper edge, we do is just reduce. Hang on, let's move that so I can see what I'm doing here. I'm struggling to see it. Ooh. Okay, so we move that to the edge a bit more and then move the whole thing back down and you see it, there we go, right, okay. And we'll get the bottom one. Let's just move this up so we can see it. And perhaps move that a bit closer to the edge like that. There we go, right, okay. So that's created our things. And the point is that this is now, when you move it up there, see that it takes the color as it passes through the effector. Brilliant, I thought. So we just move the effectors so they're just off the floor. And then that way, when that falls in, it colors it. Oh, wait a minute, it hasn't. That's strange, but you grab the shaders and move them up and it does. So this was the thing and this was really frustrating. So I wanted to figure out why this was doing this. And it turns out that because these are dynamic, this shader doesn't kind of care or know that they exist or that they, it doesn't think they're doing anything or something silly like that. So you've got to find a way around this. So this is how I found. There may be a better way, but this is the one I kind of figured. So um, I tried a few different things. I tried Expresso Link in the positions and then I remembered there's another thing uh, called the inheritance uh, effector. So I'll just make a quick copy of my cloner and delete the dynamics tag. Go to MoGraph effector inheritance. And then what you have to do here is um, put the, make sure the inheritance is in your cloner one, which doesn't have your uh, 
doesn't have your um, dynamics tag. Your other one that does, just remove the shaders from that because we don't need that anymore. And then in your uh, object, no, in your inheritance, you just drag in your dynamic cloner like so. So basically what you're telling it is to inherit all the uh, PSR details, the position details of these cubes and apply them to these cubes. So um, you have to make sure this motion, morph motion object is ticked. And then if we just hide these ones, so you can only see now these are our non-dynamic ones, you'll see that they fall and they act as if they're dynamic ones. So we've kind of cheated it. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the color still isn't working. And it's like, what, 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 what? How do you make this work? But it's very simple. All it is is literally the order. So the inheritance must be first. And you may notice now that we have our colors as they're supposed to be. So we rewind and we play and you'll see that the colors sit. So it would be quite easy um, to say, maybe grab one more shader, make a copy of that, make that say uh, a nice pink color and just move that over here, shrink it down a bit, maybe position that something like that. And then now any that sort of fall past and roll into this area here will go pink as long as you remember to put that shader in there. Boom, 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 boom. Nope, didn't work. I think I've missed. Oops, come on. That needs to sit there, there we go. Okay, boom, boom. and there we go. Now they're turning pink when they go over there. So useful idea. Um, it just bugged me, and so I needed to figure out a way around it. So hopefully that will be uh, useful to you and a nice little quick tip. Okay, cheers. Bye.